Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Jim Cao. Um, I'm a product manager uh, with Cisco, uh, managing the uh, enterprise cloud platform uh, solutions. Basically, include a, a couple of products: um, Prime Service Catalog and uh, Cisco Process Orchestrator. And uh, we also have Matt presenting, so he will come up to introduce himself. So for today's presentation, I'm going to cover a few topics here. Um, start with a problem statement. What are we trying to solve with uh, Puppet and, uh, and Heat? And um, we're going to talk about how Heat can be integrated into a CMP, which is Cloud Management Platform architecture. I'm going to cover how the resource plugin were built uh, for integrating Puppet and Heat, and how Puppet can be used to provision application server and multi-tier applications and how to extend this architecture uh, to orchestrate the component outside of the OpenStack. We'll start, let's start with the, the cloud driver. Right? So if you have been here for the last three days, you probably, you know, any, anybody know these terms very well, I believe. Infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, application as a service, and the hybrid cloud, right? Um, so those are the, the, the driver for uh, for the cloud to provide self-service um, to address the enterprise need. There's another driver now these days is uh, about the uh, DevOps and CICD, continuous integration and continuous delivery. Uh, so enterprise is starting to adopt these, uh, the newer trend for the application development. However, um, when we start to look at those two driving forces, you will see that the silo is being broken. Um, the, the storage team need to talk to the network team, uh, if they haven't before, uh, or application team, right? And so, so it's DevOps, right? Developers need to do operations. Operations folks start doing development, right? So the, the converge, converging point is the cloud. The cloud is where all the silos were broken, all the infrastructure come together. But very importantly, that's why there's a need for governance and policy, right? For, so for you looking at managing the cloud in enterprise, adopting new trend in development um, uh, platform, the governance and policy is very important. And the solution also need to deliver a number of um, these uh, components or requirements, if you will. You need to have a comprehensive automation across infrastructure. People are looking for self-service user experience, right? So, so you don't have to have somebody make a request and you, and, and you have a whole team behind there doing things manually. You want to be able to provide a self-service experience. Furthermore, you want to have the acceleration um, accelerated application development and deployment. And also has a hybrid cloud, as we just mentioned, that is, is a, a, a direction that many organizations are going. So the, the problem we're trying to address uh, with some solution from Cisco, um, we're going to use that as a, as a context for this presentation. So just a number of uh, products that we have create, you know, built and to address these in in you know, every individual area, um, including UCS Director, that is a uh, infrastructure automation uh, solution. Prime Service Catalog addresses the, the catalog self-service aspect, and ACI VAX uh, with Service Catalog and UCS Director all together, that would deliver a accelerated um, application deployment experience with one click. Um, I'm not going to go spend too much time just to give the, the context of this discussion, um, especially, um, oh, okay, so, we, so this, this suite of uh, products actually is being, you know, uh, go to market and download as a Cisco One Enterprise Cloud Suite. But for today, uh, we're not going to cover all, all the product there. We're going to focus on the orchestration integration between Prime Service Catalog and the UCS Director. Right. So UCS Director is the one that that's specialized and very um, uh, uh, provides the uh, infrastructure automation, um, and then the Prime Service Catalog provides the single plan, single pane of uh, guys user ex experience. So 
But we do want to start to look into what's the orchestration and provisioning um, use cases or requirements uh, that we need to address. So I'd like to look at it this way, right? So for, uh, for this kind of uh, cloud solutions, we need to provide the ability to allow you, the, the organization to be able to build, um, you know, build the infrastructure, you know, build the, um, the uh, design or you know, the, the design of your infrastructure. And then in a way that it can be instantiated, uh, created by your infrastructure management components. But then once you create those design, you want to be able to publish it as a service. And I think it's very important point here is the publishing is where one of the example of the governance and policy, right? So uh, it's not like everybody can create a, a design of uh, infrastructure and then anybody can order it, right? So the publishing is where you put a, put a control point in your organization where certain policy is in place. So only a certain uh, role of organization can perform the design. Only certain people can, um, can, can then uh, publish it. Only certain people uh, can then, um, the next step is consume, right? So the policy also goes to who can actually use the services that's being published. So there's a, while we are adopting DevOps and uh, you know, the cloud organization, um, this is kind of the, the use case and paradigm here that um, the solution need to, need to provide. And then the consume basically has a self-service front end that people can come in here to order and then automatically uh, at the back end that if, you know, if, if it meets the requirements, then we can go ahead and automatically deploy the, the, uh, the request, uh, whether that is infrastructure or platform or application. So let me just go through a scenario here, right? So um, when we do the, we start with build. So, so you can build the infrastructure, uh, we call it container. That is uh, not the Docker container, first, uh, first of all, but it is the way that we describe the uh, infrastructure components, you know, virtual machine, your gateway or you know, load balancer. And that's basically a network construct that um, made up the uh, infrastructure definition. So you define those construct uh, in the UCS director, right? And then that will then be discovered and imported into our service catalog where we are um, you know, enforcing the, the policy and governance. Um, and then that's where we can then visualize the container into the, uh, the stack designer. Furthermore, it's not just for visualization. This is where you can then um, overlay your application, you know, whether it's a SQL Server or it's a, um, or Oracle app. And then you publish it, right? Then, then, it, can be, then it can be orderable. And then we go to consume um, action here. The, uh, the end user would come into a service catalog. So it would be a single click and um, and the first step, then it will go through the UCS director to have the infrastructure provision, right? And then the, the stack actually would then um, include the definition of the, the puppet modules, and then it will be overlaid on top of that, um, uh, the infrastructure. And all these are orchestrated through heat, right? Okay. So, so I think that gives you a little background of, of the, the problem we try to address with Heat and Puppet. And uh, you know, through that, uh, the design of the architecture, um, we actually look for a number of options. But uh, what we're looking for are some of the criteria, including you know, we don't want to be model driven, right? So it's knowing what to orchestrate and not necessarily how you, know, how you can delegate to your infrastructure management or you can delegate it to other components. Um, we look at template-based. You know, template is important because we think uh, if you can define it as a template, um, then you can store it, you can import, you can export it, 
Uh, you can share it. You can move it from environment to environment. Uh, you can edit it. Right? So there's many, many good, uh, uh, very nice aspect about template-based. And then more importantly, you can version it. Right? And then you can extend it. Right? So you can add capability as needed. So with that, I would like to introduce Matt. Um, he's going to show uh, everyone how we build the, uh, how we use the heat and the puppet uh, in this uh, solution. Great. Thanks, Jim. Sure. So my name is Matt Brown. I'm the product owner for the applications and orchestration components of Cisco One Enterprise Cloud. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, more in depth about our orchestration and application provisioning with Heat and Puppet. So uh, as an overview, what we've got is an orchestration layer here that has a standalone OpenStack Heat and Keystone installed on it. There is an AMQP consumer on it that receives the, um, the payload from our service catalog and then calls the Heat API. And then, uh, where necessary, we have custom heat resource plugins to handle types that aren't necessarily predefined that are in our templates. Uh, so, um, as Jim mentioned, we're, this was developed to solve a particular use case that um, was driven by customer need. In particular, the need to orchestrate between Prime Services Catalog and UCS Director. We also needed to provide application provisioning. And this application provisioning needed to be based on um, a customer-driven event, uh, a stack built by the customer out of components that either we provide out of the box or that they have the ability to create themselves. Um, it needed to be able to support multi-tier applications. Uh, that was uh, another, another requirement. And as I said, um, a customer defined stacks. And it also needed to have Windows and Linux support. So why Puppet? Um, partially driven by, again, uh, customer demand. They had uh, Puppet modules they wanted to support, uh, an existing Puppet workflow we needed to fit into. Um, and also because there's a wide array of Puppet modules available in the Puppet Forge for us to be able to provide out-of-the-box um, applications and also um, out-of-the-box requirements and configurations. Um, however, the way we're doing this with, um, with writing custom heat uh, custom heat resources, you know, we're, we're not necessarily tied down to Puppet alone. I mean, we chose Puppet as we thought it was the, the best way to go, but, um, you know, it is possible to extend this to use Ansible, Chef, or even just to put batch or shell scripts inside, um, inside of these calls. So there are some options there. But again, like I said, we chose Puppet, you know. A little bit of a component overview. Um, Starting off with the service catalog, the orders, um, the orders created. So the, the customer configures their, their stack by starting with a template uh, of infrastructure and you know, layering on their um, applications they wish to put on there and configuring that. And when they go to order it, it publishes a heat template to AMQP, which then is consumed on our orchestrator node. And um, the heat API, uh, the stack create, is launched with that heat template. That heat template is where um, our custom resource types and you know, existing resource types are, are all put together to form uh, the order for this stack. And um, on the orchestrator with our standalone heat and keystone, uh, we have custom resource plugins to um, uh, regular resource plugins and custom resource plugins to handle um, all of the resources inside of the heat template to do things like create resources on the UCS director. So that's the, um, the resource template we talked about with uh, VMs and a gateway and internal network there. It's all pre-configured. And um, for this solution, it's running on VMware vCenter. And there are other resources to, for example, um, install the Puppet agent on the, on the target VM to, uh, to bootstrap the Puppet agent. So that's install and configure and forward its um, certificate over to the Puppet master and then also um, a resource to contact the Puppet Master and say, hey, you know, sign this certificate. Uh, and also to persist a classification into uh, a database on the Puppet Master. So the classification is the desired node state um, altogether, like what, what should it be when everything is done. Um, and once all that's done, uh, there's a callbacks made to the service catalog to say, hey, this order is finished. It, you know, it failed or it succeeded. 
So these heat templates, like I said, um, created dynamically by the service catalog based on what they, what they order, pass to the orchestrator, resources for each step. Um, and uh, these resources each have individual parameters, and there's top-level parameters that resources can, can um, share. And we have the ability also to um, set dependencies between resources. So for example, if we've got a, a SharePoint installation and the uh, MS SQL cluster has to be installed and running before we can move on to the application server, then we can set dependencies on between the different, um, the different aspects of it. So here, um, a sample heat template. Uh, you can see the top level parameters. This is clearly a database application here. Top level parameters, DB name, DB username, et cetera. Um, We've got some Puppet specific parameters there, the Puppet Master Host and Puppet Master IP. That's information that we're going to need for another resource down the line. And um, some infrastructure specific parameters. This is for um, our UCS director. So those parameters would come in there and be handled by um, the resource. And here we have um, a resource, a little stub for, um, for a resource. This would be a, a custom resource we define, we define not a, an existing resource. And this is for our um, service catalog service for UCSD container. Um, like we said earlier, container not meaning Linux container. That's um, terminology for uh, UCS director. So our custom uh, heat resources and plugins. So the plugins handle um, the work for these custom resource types. Um, they're generally defined with inputs and outputs, parameters and, and outputs for them. And uh, inside these resources, we have, because um, they all extend the, the heat engine resource type, um, we have lifecycle operations such as handle create, handle delete, uh, handle update. And that's where the work that you're actually going to expect this plugin to do, that's where that goes. Um, where you put them is into a configured directory, the plugin DIRS configured directory. You place them there, and upon heat starting up, uh, it automatically registers those resources as uh, available by heat. Um, let's see, yeah, like I said, they're dropped in the heat plugins folder. They extend resource. But we also have some types that are, um, that are not discovered from necessarily from plugins living in the plugin directory because they're types based on service items in our, in our service catalog. Um, so obviously for each one of those service items, we don't want to have to go through and create a new plugin for each one. So these are dynamically created types. Um, so we drop uh, a piece of code into the plugin directory that um, isn't executable. So as it's going through all of the plugins, it hits this one, which makes calls back to our service catalog to retrieve um, the definition, uh, the name and parameters for these um, dynamically created types. These are primarily just to provide callbacks to um, the service catalog. And then um, a resource mapping, as I'll show in the next one, is done that um, will map these resources to, um, to a stub type and actually create these dynamically created types that are based on service items that are defined. Okay. So a resource plugin example. It requires a resource mapping to determine what kind of type it is. Um, and the class defined there with, um, with its inputs, its properties at the top level. And then, um, you know, exactly what does the resource return. So that's the bottom section there. That's our output. Inside the handlers here, uh, you can see um, handle create, obviously called when um, a stack create is called. And this is an example of one that we, um, of a custom resource. So inside of the handle create, you can see the API call to actually create, um, to create the container for, um, or container, the resource on UCSD, um, and then return that container. So that happens, and then uh, it begins a poll. And inside that, and that poll is uh, handled by the check create complete, which gets handed the output from your handle create. And you define what it means to be done there inside of here. So um, that definition is there and will return true when it's created and return false if it is not yet created. And um, likewise, we have the handle delete that works in um, the same fashion that, um, so on a stack delete, for example, um, you would have your API calls to delete your resource. 
and then return that resource as the output. And then poll polling is done there to check if the delete's complete. Um, and again, you define what that means and return true or false. So moving on to our Puppet integration. So um, we chose to use a master agent configuration. Again, this is you know, uh, mostly driven by customer need where they, they are working in a master agent configuration type. And we thought that for this, for this workflow that it seemed to make the most sense for us. We're also using an external node classifier to um, deal with classifications and retrieving classifications, or the, the agents retrieving classifications. And um, we're developing right now um, M Collective driven by heat. That's something that we're working on for this next release. So Puppet modules, we're providing dozens of out of the box apps and modules that um, you know, can define applications or configuration states or what have you. Um, we're working on existing Puppet installation support. So we want to be able to drop into an existing uh, Puppet installation without obviously causing any problems. Um, in order to make that happen, we're using a, um, a model namespacing, a module namespacing. So basically all of our modules um, are, uh, are named specifically, all the modules and all the dependencies are named specifically so that if we drop into an existing installation, we're not gonna have any name clashes. Say we have a MySQL class that goes in there and then there's already a MySQL class living in there. We'll get the namespace. So we ended up going with, um, with, a, with a token underscore then the name of it. And this mirrors the Puppet Enterprise workflow for the, um, for the modules that they're providing. They do the same thing, PE underscore, you know. So that's how uh, we handled that. And Puppet Enterprise versus Puppet Community. So um, <clears throat> we designed the, the, the steps and the heat, the custom heat resources that we made to work for, um, for both. And that's something that we're working on the next release that um, you know, we're definitely gonna have like one workflow that can apply to both. Um, and to that end, we're also working on um, having M Collective drive the puppet orchestration. So for, um, for, for example, um, accepting the certification and for asking the puppet agent to classify itself. And of course the modules uh, need to work with both. Um, that goes without saying. And it allows, um, it allows the customer to continue configuration of the node. Um, for example, in a Puppet Enterprise environment, you know, we're, we're able to drop in so they can continue the configuration of the node without us interrupting, um, interrupting that workflow. So our agent install is, uh, is handled by a custom resource. Um, there, uh, there's a post initialization step that's run via the uh, UCS director. There's a REST API. After the, um, after the VM is spun up that we can call to run arbitrary code on the uh, target VM. This differs from like cloud init, uh, which we don't have access to through UCS director so much as, um, but the nice thing about this is that we can then support Linux and Windows. So once we uh, instantiate the, we'll install and configure the, the Puppet agent, then Puppet Master can communicate with, uh, with the agent, whether it's Windows or Linux, it, it doesn't matter, it communicates the same. Um, and also through this, through this workflow, um, this, uh, this bootstrap, uh, we're also going to be setting up the M Collective key exchange and configuration. So that's something that comes for free with Puppet, with, uh, Puppet Enterprise, Puppet um, Community Edition is something we have to uh, build up. Okay, we're using, um, if any of you use Puppet before, you're probably familiar with this, a role and profile module workflow. And that um, a class here defines um, an application or an individual configuration. And the profile will then instantiate that class and then, um, and then you know, continue configuration of it using, um, using functions of that class. And the, the role will call those profiles to describe a complete state. Um, and then parameters get trickled down to the class from the, ro from the profile. And um, this is considered uh, generally best practice. It's not absolutely required. You can you know, classify a class directly if that's all you really need to do, but <clears throat> most of the time that's really never the case. Um, I haven't really said much about Hira, um, but our workflow does not really preclude the use of Hira. So um, that's something we're hoping to, uh, to not get in the way of at all. 
a little bit more about a role. Um, it uh, is where you pass in your, your top level parameters. Here's an example of a role. Um, it can include logic if you want it to. Um, so you have the ability to, to do some switching there if you'd like. Um, and what it does is it instantiates the profile. Um, and you see that the, the parameters have now trickled down from the role to the profile. Um, and you can call multiple profiles from within the role. So if you have multiple um, configurations you need on a single role, you can do that multiple times in here. Um, the format of a profile here uh, takes in the parameters from that role. Um, this can also include some logic if you want it to. Um, and then this is the point where you would instantiate that class, uh, bringing in those, um, bringing in those uh, parameters that have trickled down from your role to your profile. And then once you instantiate it, you can call functions of that class as well. And uh, we're using this um, anchor order here so that everything goes in individual order. So um, the heat orchestration templates for, for the apps. So um, you know, the heat engine is fed that heat template um, for the stat create. And um, there are uh, resources that specifically specify the, the puppet role and parameters that get um, put into the, the external node classifier. And uh, those are interpreted by uh, custom resource plugins. And uh, then finally, that um, orchestration template then we handle the VM creation and the, and the continuing puppet steps, like um, accepting the cert and, and forcing the, the puppet agent to classify itself and capturing that output. I've been talking about the external node classifier. Um, exactly what that is, is it's a, it is a puppet feature. It's something that's included with Puppet Enterprise, but uh, not included with Puppet Community Edition, something you have to write yourself. So our goal is to um, have the the REST API for the ENC be the same type signature for um, Puppet, Puppet Enterprises as for Puppet Community Edition so that we don't have to write multiple, um, multiple uh, resources for that. Um, and, and of course, this is done, uh, the communication is managed through a custom resource plugin that communicates from heat. So for the next release, our plan um, is to continue with um, M Collective interaction to drive the drive the orchestration. M Collective stands for um, Marionette Collective. Uh, it's a framework for parallel job execution. Um, ideally, in an environment, you would use M Collective to you know splay out commands to large groups of uh, of nodes. But our idea here is we're going to use it for these individual um, these individual um, puppet calls. And it's broadcast based as opposed to being SSH, you know, you're not SSHing into the node or doing anything. All the nodes are listening to to this um, to this queue, and it contain the message contains filters to let the node know. I mean, is, does this message apply to me or not? And it's also extensible. Um, for example, uh, the ability to accept the cert on the Puppet Master based on M Collective is not something that um, was already a part of M Collective. It's a plugin that w that we found that we are working with, and that needs to be. Um, and that plugin needs to be uh, on the client calling it and the client running it. Uh, the M Collective interaction, the master agent server client setup is um, a default in Puppet Enterprise. Um, it, the client needs to be installed on the orchestration node, um, and the config agent also needs to be set up during the bootstrap. As I said before, it comes for free in um, Puppet Enterprise. And there is a, you know, the, the plugin I mentioned for certificate signing from the orchestrator. Um, and then the plan is to use that to initialize and track the puppet run from the orchestrator. So it, you run it, and then uh, there's the ability to poll afterwards and, and check to see if it's done. And then from there, grab, grab the output from the last run. There's another uh, plugin that exists already for, for puppet. And that's part of a, a custom resource plugin that we're using. So um, with all this, um, putting it together, how, how do we actually make these applications multi-tier? So that infrastructure template um, structure has multiple VMs, a gateway, and a private network. And this is all pre-configured as to which ports route to which VM, um, something that is set up in the, inside the UCS director. So having that, we now have the, um, we now have the, the ability for these, these uh, VMs to talk to each other. And the heat template can contain multiple resources. Um, as you see here, you know, we've got, um, this is just a stub, but 
got a web tier, you know, and, and a DB tier listed here, and um, you know, parameters can be shared between these resources. Say, if you've got you know a port that you need to you need to have mapped on, on one to the other, you know, you can always share that information. Um, and we have the depends on functionality existing. So, um, like I said earlier, the um, the example of SharePoint where you have MS SQL and that needs to be completed before you can move on to um, to the app server. So that that depends on functionality. So um, looking at this, you know, there's a lot of talk about containers and um, this week and you know, how could this apply to containers? Well, there is a Docker Puppet module already that we've uh, brought into our solution in this current release. And this Docker Puppet module um, has all has the ability to not only install Docker, but also to um, to spin up a, an image and you know create a, a container on a node. And since we're using that role profile paradigm, you can have multiple uh, multiple Docker profiles set up in a role. So if you want your VM to have you know multiple containers running on it, you have the ability with um, with this to go ahead and define that and everything that is available to um, to Docker to instantiate or spin up a container is available through the, the Puppet module. So the Puppet module will only ensure that Docker is installed, so it won't be installing Docker for each time it runs, it just does it once and then continues on the configuration from there. And this is containers on VMs. Um, this is not uh, like on bare metal or anything. So um, that, that's, the, that's the current workflow. But um, you know, taking all this into account, you know, it is possible to use other, um, use other OpenStack container workflows and call them via heat through here. So this solution we made down the road, uh, as opposed to spinning up VMs, we may use one of, the many, um, one of the many OpenStack container workflows that have been discussed this week to, um, to instantiate containers as opposed to, um, as opposed to VMs. So, um, Oh, wrong way. So that concludes my section of it. I want to have Jim back up here to to do an yeah, we'll do it together. Close it up, and then we can take any questions. Um, if you do have questions, please go to the mic so the good people at home can can hear you. Yeah, no, I, I think you know, can stay here. I mean, we just have a, a couple closing point. You know, I think uh, glad to have a chance to share about how we you know, use Puppet and how we use Heat uh, with everyone here. Looking down the road, uh, definitely I think this is a tremendous opportunity to continue to uh, grow the solution uh, and leverage, you know, other OpenStack components or projects in our solution. So this is one example to show how, you know, how the, you know, uh, decouplable, if you will, right, or you can leverage any components in your solution, right, and then there's tremendous opportunities down the road. So the next thing we're looking at would be um, integrating with uh, um, OpenStack instance. So the heat, like we mentioned, the template itself is transferable. Um, and then the engine itself, we can have the template directly import into or send it into the heat in a OpenStack and orchestrate the OpenStack environment. So if your cloud is OpenStack, you know, that can be done that way. And I think I showed the, uh, the stack designer, right? The stack designer is the one that you can uh, visually create and design your infrastructure, and that's where, or the, um, the, the so-called container, and that can be uh, a container on the OpenStack, if you will. Um, so I think that is kind of the future looking. I think we talk about the uh, public enterprise uh, support, so that's definitely we, we are looking at. So if, if you know, customer has public enterprise already, um, then definitely it makes sense to connect to it. All right, so I think a few minutes, um, any, any question, please um, you know, let us know. Were we that thorough? <laughs> I to go to the mic. Are you, basically, are you basically deploying one container per VM? At this point, or that's the future step? No, we can. Um, so, uh, with the role profile model, you can have multiple uh, Docker profiles that, in each profile, can then spin up a, a container um, of you know you, from the hub or whatever. Can you spin up a container so you can have you know as many as your VM can can handle really? And, and that's handled through. 
are you using Kubernetes? Or what are you handling? What are you using for container management? I guess. Docker. Docker. Okay. So there's a Docker um, puppet module that we're leveraging there okay. to do that with. Any question? Uh, if not, this is our contact info. So you have it here, and uh, there's a link for Cisco One uh, Enterprise Cloud Suite. If you have interest, um, feel free to uh, take a look. All right, that's the talk for today. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.